lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. Yeah. How are you? Ah, well, you know, surviving, living the life, living it up. Living the life? <laughs> yep, yep. I have a pond in my backyard. Yeah, you do. I was taking a look at that bad boy when I came in. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, like... I hope it dissipates soon because that's going to be a mosquito pond. Yeah. Well, I, we're, it's supposed to rain through the weekend, you said? Yeah, that's what they say. Okay. Well, then it'll be here through the weekend at least. Uh, how long does it take for mosquitoes to start germinating? I think more than the couple of days that it usually takes for it to uh, absorb or yeah, or uh, evaporate or whatever it does when the rain finally stops. Uh, I, I don't think it really evaporates here because <laughs> we're, we're getting into that 98% humidity part right. of the year <laughs> just hope the ground absorbs it yeah eventually. the ground absorbs it okay <laughs> yeah. um i was thinking about starting uh, rice patties yeah 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 you i think can, i have the uh <laughs> you've got the i think i have the environment back you there do, for it. you do today man i yeah. tell you i mean I, could, I don't think i could do like a normal garden <laughs> no no everything not, would drown you would have to you could do some of those like above ground things where they like build the the bunkers up oh yeah <laughs> like i mean that's that's like your only hope <laughs> yeah i could do like some kind of hydroponic thing or like one of those uh my mom used to do uh, yeah but you don't have a privacy fence up anymore man be careful with that <laughs> nah, yeah yeah <laughs> Well, I mean, it would be stuff that was legal. I hope so. Yeah. It, it would. My mom used to do the uh, upside down tomatoes. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's it, cool. It, like hang them and they actually grow downward. I've seen that be done, but I don't remember ever seeing that at your mom's when I was over. I must have missed it. Yeah, it was but a long time ago. I've seen it be done, though. I've seen people grow it that way. Yeah. Like the tomato plants. And it stuff. seems like that would work, but I don't like tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Got to grow something you enjoy, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I have to. I have to think about that a little bit. I don't think that I have the right environment for like spinach, oh, or yeah. uh, I don't. I don't know what the right environment is though. Carrots, maybe. I don't yeah, know. maybe. Um, yeah. Cucumbers, uh, onions, squash, potatoes, potatoes. They grow down in the ground. Yeah, I think they would drown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they would just like rot out in the back of my. They're gonna be like floating out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know when they're ready. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Go fish them out. Um. Well, where do you want to start today? I, I don't know. What you got on tap for us, Mike? I don't have. I'm not bringing a lot to the table tonight. I'm well, just um, we got your heads up. We got some predictions coming up. Okay. Um, we could start there. Uh, we could start about our first. Uh, Oh yeah, we should definitely Our open first with strike that. on with YouTube. The, yeah, we we've been what what's the word censured? Yeah, and censored. <laughs> and censored at the yeah. same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think it was episode seventy nine. Yeah, um, episode seventy nine um, was uh, was banned from YouTube, yeah. and um, we got a little notification saying that it uh, it breached the community standards for medical misinformation. We didn't even talk about vaccines very long on that episode, actually. It was like, yeah. it was like six or eight minutes of, of talk, which means which was more than enough time for us to say a bunch of things that they're not happy with. Oh, apparently. yeah. Which means whoever had to listen to it and make the decision up or down had to listen to almost the whole thing before they got there. That's true. It didn't start until like uh, more than a half hour into the episode. So, so may- no, I'm sure that they, they have some kind of software that tell, I imagine that they knew exactly where to yeah. where to listen. Um, if somebody listened at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, there were several things that we talked about that were on their list of things that you're not allowed to say, yeah. as it turned out. Um, one was uh, anything positive about hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin as a treatment for COVID. Um, can't can't say that. Can't, can't utter those words. Yeah. Um, you can't uh, say that the vaccines don't reduce the risk of contracting um, I don't think we said that it doesn't reduce the risk of contracting the virus. I think we just said that it doesn't make you immune. It doesn't mean you it won't contract It doesn't provide the virus. immunity yeah. is, yeah. I, I think, what we were um, saying, yeah. And uh, let's see. It, uh, we couldn't, it, we're not allowed to say that masks don't reduce the risk of contracting or transmitting the virus. Yeah. Um, we probably did say that because, you yeah. know, the only study that's been done so far on COVID and masks uh, said that there was no difference in infection rates between masked and the unmasked group. So if they can produce to me for me a study for COVID that says that uh, masks are effective, other than people just saying, well, they're effective with other things. Yeah. Um, you, you don't understand how this works, Mike. We say yeah. the same thing over and over with no evidence to back it up. And eventually people will believe it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> it works for 
some of them that's apparently. What, that's what the media does. Like, <laughs> yeah. Beat that drum. Well, over why isn't and that over. working for us? <laughs> we because we provide evidence. Yeah. Well, that's part of it, and you know, we're not the mass media, yeah. at least not yet. I did make a mistake though. I said that the um, the uh, vaccines uh, that they had to come up with a or create a new fund. Um, to cover damages from the COVID vaccines. And I, I was wrong about that. They, uh, it, it was subsumed into a fund that already existed. Nice. <laughs> Everything else I said about it is accurate, yeah. but, you know, I, and that's not I did what make they, that mistake. By the way, that's not what they flagged us for. Either. Yeah, that wasn't on the list. Um, <laughs> that wasn't even on the list. <laughs> yeah. So I ha- I'm going to have to appeal, I guess, because I can't just leave it alone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, one of the things was that you aren't allowed to say anything that contradicts the uh, scientific consensus or the WHO. So the first thing I did was pull a WHO sponsored study uh, or not study. It was a meta analysis. Yeah. Um, uh, WHO sponsored meta analysis that says that ivermectin is effective. <laughs> there you go. So <laughs> I figure at the very least uh, they can't get me for that because, well, I mean, it's a WHO study. Yeah. Well, there you go. Like, find them with their own information. And then, you know, we were, ta- we were talking before we got started here that, like, the whole idea of you can't um, challenge the scientific consensus is the most absurd thing anyway. Yeah. And uh, so the first thing I brought up was that, and what I was going to say to them, and now I have to, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, is that uh, Eratosthenes... Um, calculated based on on uh, shadows on the length of shadows um and the distance between two points calculated the circumference of the earth within two percent of the actual number in like the third century bc yeah all right um at the time he calculated the uh the circumference of the spherical earth (laughs) That was not the scientific consensus. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, it's not as bad as they say. It's not everybody believed that the Earth was flat back then. That's not really true. But yeah. um, it was not the, the consensus, though, that the Earth was a sphere and was 26,000 miles in, in diameter. Yeah. Um, or in circumference, I mean. Yeah. Uh, so um, he wouldn't have been able to publish on YouTube, apparently. <laughs> and he was right. <laughs> Well, not only that, I guarantee you can go search YouTube right now and find flat earth videos. Yeah, that all doesn't fit the scientific long. consensus. You can find them all day long on there. But somebody talking about what may be going on about um, vaccines and stuff mm-hmm. is, is completely banned. We have to ban that talk. But yeah. Yeah. Well, and OK, so I was listening to um, a Pfizer, a clip from a Pfizer CEO uh, right before we came in. It, so I'm going to go ahead and put this right up front so that they can go ahead. They don't have to listen as long as time before <laughs> right. they, we'll they remove them. our video. Yeah. Um, our, our video that's not really a video. Video audio. Yeah, our, our, our audio video. <laughs> yeah. um, so I was listening to the Pfizer uh, CEO, and he was talking about boosters for the, the COVID vaccine. That, oh, yeah, they're going to be giving boosters every year. It's going to be just like the flu virus where you have to get a booster every year, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. now, of course, what a Pfizer CEO is thinking is like, that is money every oh, year. Yeah, just, guaranteed, that's guaranteed money, money every yeah. year. <laughs> Um, but then as he, since he mentioned it, he's like, so we're, uh, you know, we're, we think that what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to put it into one shot, the flu flu vaccine and the COVID vaccine. Well, so you only have to get a shot once. And of course the flu vaccine in a good year is about 60% effective. And in a bad year, it's 30 to 40% effective. And that's the reason that a lot of people don't get the flu vaccine. So we'll put the flu vaccine with the COVID vaccine. Right, that's a good idea. That, that makes, way, that way, if you want the COVID vaccine, you got to get the flu vaccine too. Yeah. This is exactly how they're thinking about this stuff. I mean, he, oh. it's right from the horse's mouth this good time. Night. So, anyway, yeah. um, but predictions. Yeah. Other than the prediction that we already made long ago that, that this was <laughs> going to be something that they were going to give boosters for, and it was going to be just like a huge windfall to the oh yeah uh, pharma companies. Oh yeah, they're cashing in right and, now. And you know, okay, I can't even get to the thing because I keep getting sidetracked with the stuff, and I'm really irritated actually about this removal of this yeah, video. I was telling you before we got on that, <laughs> like, like so it's been irritating to me. These other people, everybody saying, "Oh, this got pulled, that got pulled," like Tom mm-hmm. Woods and another bunch of stuff pulled, mm-hmm. and like, and that makes me mad. But it makes me even more mad when it's something of ours yeah <laughs> like yeah. like it really does kind of hit home like man like we're living under this crazy regime right now yeah and it's not like i was making up you know or like well, we yeah. were making up stuff it, 
anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, well, the, so the, I'm going to respond point. to them with evidence. It's the whole point that you can't, you can't have the conversation. Yeah. Because that, that's really what this mm-hmm. boils down to is you can't even think these thoughts or have these conversations. Yeah. I thought you were supposed to be a personal platform for people to express their views, not a propaganda platform yeah. for the, the mainstream. Absolutely. Uh, the mainstream narrative. Um, but here, here we are, I this guess. Is, this is where know. are we at? Uh, and, uh, oh, so, but the Johnson and Johnson thing. Yeah. Like there's still, as far as I know, no evidence connecting the blood clots to the shot. No, uh, I heard something yesterday, maybe they were mm-hmm. talking about it and they're, like I said, they're looking into it and blah, blah, blah. But mm-hmm. they're, they're even say, they're just like what you're saying there, that there's not really anything solid here. It's only mm-hmm. been a handful of cases yeah. and they can't like confirm that this is what, it, that, that there's even really a good reason to stop giving it. Yeah. But the, the die's kind of already been cast now. Well, Nobody's uh, going to want to get that Johnson mm-hmm. and Johnson. Yeah, and I th- I wouldn't be surprised if it was a campaign by Pfizer or Moderna um, well, to it may very, eliminate competition. Because all you got to do is put it out there. And Yeah, well, and that's exactly what's been done here is the, the idea's already kind of been put in people's head. Oh, stay mm-hmm. away from that Johnson & Johnson. Mm-hmm. And you may see, so all of these companies had their own version or have their own version of the shot. Yeah. You may see more of this where, yeah. where where there's really like a competition between these pharmaceutical companies mm-hmm. to undermine the other one for profit motivations yeah. because they've all produced this thing and now they all need to sell it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, they got plenty of money from the government in a lot of cases. And of course well, yeah. they got a bunch of protections too. Oh, absolutely. Um, which is yeah, why but, there's a but, fund to pay out damages. Yeah. But it still don't, government. it don't look good for Johnson and Johnson no, that their shot is, is being treated the way it is, especially mm-hmm. on social media. I'm sure you heard the TikToks on no agenda that they were playing oh, today. Yeah. I did. Um, that one of those was a really what good. The, yeah. That one with the guy <laughs> talking about 66%. Go ahead. Roll the dice. That I'm rolling them up, dice. Man. Yeah. No, uh, that guy was good. Yeah. Um, but like I say, there's, there's a serious campaign right now against mm-hmm. Johnson and Johnson. Well, and uh, so the Johnson and Johnson vaccine is an adenovirus vaccine, um, mm-hmm. which I can't get into all the ins and outs because I just don't know it well enough. I would say something wrong, but yeah. um, but this is a proven way of creating a vaccine, whereas the mRNA stuff is new. So the Johnson and Johnson is <laughs> like a traditional vaccine, then? Not quite. It Close. Is, it is. It's mm, it's a vaccine type that has been used for a long time. Okay. It's not the traditional as in it's like a, it's a dead virus. It's, yeah. it's not like that, but it's um, uh, I think it's using a close um, um, a closely related species to deliver the yeah. Im- immunization. Um, yeah. I think it's using like, you know, some kind of uh, chimpanzee material or something like that. I can't remember. Like okay. I said, I, I don't know enough about the, but it's been around longer than this new stuff. Oh that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is yeah. a way that, that vaccines have been done in the past. It's not something that's brand new. I mean, gotcha. I guess to be fair, MRNA vaccines aren't brand new, but they are at this scale. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and they haven't been proven to be, um, effective safe actually safe. Is, the, <laughs> yeah. is the issue yeah. um especially in regards to coronaviruses because they've been trying to do mrna vaccines for the common cold for a long time for like a decade or more yeah um but one of the problems has been uh that um after getting vaccinated uh being exposed again to the wild virus was um was creating real severe symptoms in the in animal testing yeah and so they couldn't show it to be effective enough to get approval to use it on humans. Well, that's good though. They didn't do any animal testing on this one. So. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Just, well, just, no, yeah, they're doing uh, it right now. Well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We are the animal testing. <laughs> yes. Um, so. so, okay. So moving on to the predictions. Right. Today is April the 16th. Yes, it is. All right. So we are two weeks from the end of this month. And, um, so I had predicted that Biden would be out of office by May 1st. We're coming up on that time. Yep. Um, so, uh, predictions, do you, do you think I'll make it or no? I, dude, 
I, I would, I still, even at this point, I know it's getting down to the wire, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't bet against it, man. Yeah. I mean, every day is a challenge here for this guy. <laughs> <That's> like, <true. laughs> I still get such a kick out of reading um, the speeches on uh, whitehouse.gov yeah. where they print what he says, but then they, <laughs> they put in parentheses or brackets what he was supposed to say. <laughs> Cracks me up. Yeah. Uh, I don't oh. remember seeing that in the past. Maybe they did that in the past, and I, but I don't, and I, other people just didn't me. make as many mistakes. Maybe that's what it is, but I, you know Trump. But though, I really like, don't. I mean, Trump was that. really off the cuff a lot, and if they didn't, if they weren't doing that under Trump, then yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I, there are sometimes where there there are phrases that are actually marked out, like they're <laughs> yeah. there, but they put a strike through. Yeah, yeah. At, in the um, in the reprint of it, and then <laughs> put in brackets or parentheses something else. What he yeah, it's yeah, yeah it's funny. Um, yeah. So then, th- so there's that. Yeah. Uh, in in two weeks, I predicted it would be, if not before, Biden's last day in office. Two weeks is a long time. I'm just saying, <laughs> plenty of time for this to come into fruition. So I could be wrong. I, yeah. We'll see. We, we'll have to see. We will see. I I didn't. I thought that he would make it about a hundred days in office. That they would give him his hundred days. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So we'll see. Uh. So then there's the second prediction that I'm making now. Yeah. Um, that I'm far more confident in. All right. Um, we are just over two weeks from the first U.S. service death in Afghanistan in over a year. Oh, yeah. So. So um, we were supposed to leave May 1st. Yep. Uh, that was the deal that Trump made. Um, Biden came into office and said, yeah, we're not doing that. Yeah. Um, now, he has now announced that we will absolutely be out of Afghanistan on 9-11. And that just irritates me to no end because yeah. he's he's picked a date to make a spectacle of it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no reason for it. what what do we expect to accomplish in those four months? No, I, well I'll tell you what will end up happening. And here's the before we move on. Yeah, here's the other thing. He had essentially not quite, but he had close to four months from the time he took office to get people out. Yeah. So why is it that he can't get people out in the four months since he took office, but he can get people out in the four months between the date we were supposed to be out and his new date that he picked? He, I, I'll tell you, it is strange because when he came into office, he was all like, we're not leaving, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And now he's even like walking that back saying, you know, because I, I saw some quotes yesterday of, of stuff he had said. I forget exactly. I have some quotes. Well, why don't you? Yeah, because <laughs> like I say... Yeah, go for it. Um, so he said in the speech where he announced that we were we would be leaving on 9-11 um, that uh, his three predecessors had said, now is not the right moment to leave. Now, first off, I don't remember Trump ever saying that. Yeah, no. Um, and uh, secondly, isn't Biden saying exactly the same thing by saying, well, we're not going to leave by the previously agreed upon date, but uh, we'll leave later? Yeah. Isn't he also saying now is not the right time to leave? Exactly. And if he doesn't believe that he's saying now is not the right time to leave, then why aren't we leaving? Yeah. There's no reason why we couldn't just pack up and go now. Yeah. Um, now, he did say something in that speech that I uh, that I actually really appreciated. He said, um, American troops shouldn't be used as a bargaining chip between warring parties and other countries. Yeah. I Finally. Yeah, I agree <laughs> yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, now, what he's saying there is that, that we shouldn't be using U.S. troops to try and um, use it as a as leverage yeah. uh, to get a peace deal or whatever in Afghanistan specifically this time. But, um, I mean, I think that that's a, that's a good point to make, and hopefully other people agree with it. Um, yeah. it history would say that they, they haven't mostly. That, in yeah. fact, our biggest bargaining chip in any kind of... Um, zone of conflict, whether it's actual, actual troops on the ground or not, the threat of troops is what we use to get our way in. Dipl- yeah. The U S military is a huge part of U S diplomacy, Yeah, which makes it not very diplomatic. Right. Yeah. You know, we can go back to the, um, diplomacy for dummies thing when we were talking about him calling Putin, a, oh, um, yeah. a murderer. Um, but anyway, uh, it seems to me that he's he's saying the same thing um, by not leaving now. And here's a point that I really want to make about this is that um, there's no reason that we couldn't have been out May 1st. No. All right. There's no reason that he couldn't have honored that agreement to begin with. And there's a and it really 
sickens me to think that he's not honoring that agreement because we can't do anything that Trump agreed to. I think that's uh, actually, I do think that's a big part of it. I think mm-hmm. that it's, it's gotta be this whole, like, this is my thing and this is how I'm going to do it. Yeah. Um, and I tell you, so any, any soldiers that died between May 1st and September 11th, that blood's strictly on Biden's hands. Exactly the point that those, I wanted to make. Those troops could have been home during that time. Mm-hmm. Like, and there was no reason why they could, they shouldn't have been. Yeah. Um, and, and me personally, I hope we don't lose any troops between that time, but I'm fearful, feel for, feel fearful. Yeah. Can't talk that, that we will because the Taliban is going to step up their a- actions yeah. and stuff after May 1st. Yeah. They've already said they would. Yep. And take note, everyone, that from the moment we made this agreement that we were leaving, they have not attacked U.S. troops. Yeah. yeah. Not a single U.S. troop has died in that time. Yeah. Exactly. And they have said very clearly, and I think that it's fair for them to say so, although obviously I don't want any of our troops to die, but yeah. um, I think it's fair for them to say, hey, you broke the agreement, so now you've given us a new date. How do we know that you're going to yeah. live up to that one? And you haven't followed us. You haven't followed through on anything that you've told us so far. Why should we trust that you're it, that you're going to leave this time? Exactly. And the, the truth is, unfortunately, that um, when... May 1st passes and a U.S. serviceman dies at the hands of the Taliban because we didn't leave on the agreed upon date. Yeah. That will be used as an excuse not to leave on September 11th either. Exactly. That will, and that's, that's, that's a kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy mm-hmm. because it's, you're exactly right. Once that happens, it's going to be, well, we can't leave now. We've got to blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Just pack it up. Yeah. Bring them home, man. Um, so there's that. Yeah. Now, here's the scary thing that he said in the speech. I got one more quote for you. Okay. Um, He said, uh, we have to shore up our competitiveness to meet. This is the reason that we need to leave, by the way, Uh, to interrupt the quote that I'm (laughs) reading. Um, This is the reason that we need to leave, that we got to get out of Afghanistan. This is one of the main purposes, because we have to shore up our competitiveness to meet the stiff competition from an increasingly assertive China. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, okay. So we're going to end our war in Afghanistan so we have the troops free so that we can start our war with China? Great. Yeah, that Great sounds plan. like a good idea. Guess what, buddy? If we're going to war with China, we need a lot more than what's sitting in Afghanistan right now. <laughs> well, that's, that's true, too. There's like 2,500 <laughs> troops there. Yeah, um, that ain't going to do it, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and I don't know that we have what'll do it. No, we don't. No, I agree with that. Um, I mean, I do agree with that. I mean, because <laughs> it's just, and we've talked about this on the podcast a lot, but to think that there will be a war with China or Russia mm-hmm. that doesn't involve nuclear weapons is yeah. just not going to happen. And even if you leave the nuclear weapons out of it, we have what we need to defend ourselves and our allies, I would say, probably. And, you know, mm-hmm. Japan and the Philippine, Philippines, that's kind of an ally. They're really more of a colony but anyway um you know the philippines uh south korea i guess um from uh from chinese attack yeah like um taiwan i'm not so sure about it's like literally 100 (laughs) miles off the coast of china yeah um but uh or even some of the places like uh, macau that used to be a portuguese colony um but at, at any rate we certainly have the ability to defend ourselves and maybe Japan and South Korea from yeah. a Chinese attack. Yeah. Um, we do not have the power to attack China in that, that region <laughs> of the world. Yeah. No, I agree. We can't do it. Yeah. Um, but here's, here's the thing though. This is the, this is the unfortunate military industrial complex. The, the, um, the moneyed interest in doing this is that there's not a lot of money in these little rinky dink wars in third world countries, um, that, uh, you can't get a whole bunch of heavy equipment in and, and so forth. Um, there's just not a lot of money in that, uh, to send infantry and buy them a bunch of guns. And, uh, now you still have the air force. The air force gets plenty of money, I suppose, out of these things. So you can buy planes and you can drop bombs and you got artillery and so forth. But that doesn't come close to comparing to uh, a war with China where you can buy a whole bunch of aircraft carriers. <laughs> yeah, you need oh, all those yeah. ships. Yeah. Man, 
The aircraft carrier is a big ticket item. Yeah. Um, battleships, which are useless, but hey, yeah. um, they you know they makes cost you feel a lot. better. Yeah, <laughs> um, they're, they're out there patrolling, right? <laughs> and, and the unfortunate truth, I think, in all of this is that that's the reason for the pivot out of these little uh, third world um, countries to what they call a near peer competitor in Russia or China is that you can uh, make an excuse for the big ticket items and a huge blue water Navy and uh, you know, all of this stuff because that's a whole lot of money of our money of yeah. taxpayer money that they can siphon into the, the military industrial complex and make sure that Northrop Grumman and uh, general dynamics and all of these companies make plenty of money by privatizing public funds in that way. And, and that's the reason for it. That's yeah. why we want to look at this. They just want to create another Cold War so that they can make excuses of why they need to buy to all this extra build equipment. build up the and, military. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and it's absurd. Yeah. And it's a huge waste of money anyway. Yeah. I mean, because the truth is that we, we also know, I hope, <laughs> I, I, actually, I say the truth <laughs> is we know. I think we know, we know I'm, yeah. I'm not sure that the people that are planning this stuff know that we could never have a war with China or Russia. Mm. We can never have a war with China or Russia. No. Um, what is it that Scott Horton says all the time? It's something like, um, it goes without saying that these countries have thermonuclear weapons. So it goes unsaid. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, it, it's not even considered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the, everybody would never, would never use them. No, no, that's not the, that's not the doctrine of mutually assured destruction. The doctrine of mutually assured destruction is that you can't go to war with them yeah. because of that. But, yeah, exactly. Any kind of war. Because it will eventually escalate into them being used. Yeah. Whoever is losing at some point. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, that's the, that's the terrifying part of this whole thing. And when I was, uh, I was talking to my mom yesterday about, um, about us finally leaving Afghanistan. And, and she said she was, and, and I said I, to her, um, and you know, she's, she's kind of, kind of neocon, definitely Republican, Republican. Yeah. Um, she's a red Republican. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, and uh, there was plenty of support for these wars at the beginning. And yeah. I, but I asked her, I said, I, and I think that this is true of most, most people in this country, if you could tell, if you, if George Bush could have told us in 2001, 2002, what the results of us going into Afghanistan or Iraq were, yeah, how many of us would have still said, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Not very many. And, and, he, and even she was like, yeah, well, I, I don't know. I mean, it, like if we'd have kept a very limited approach to it, if, a decade ago when we killed Osama bin Laden, we just said, all right, that's what we were here Let's for. pack it in. Yeah. yeah. Um, then maybe that's something, but that's not what this has turned into. No. And, and I will say this. So, I mean, I was in support of the wars in the beginning. I wasn't real, not so much Iraq. I was against mm -hmm. Iraq from pretty well the word go, but Afghanistan, I was like, yeah, let's go get them. You mm -hmm. know? Um, and I've learned a lot since then. But there were voices out there, particularly when we went into Iraq, saying not to do this. And yeah. that exactly what is happening will happen. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and these were, I mean, I, they were on mainstream media. I yeah. mean, they, were, they weren't They were like like they are now, like tucked away. Like you mm -hmm. don't, no, I mean, and they were saying like there's, there's all of these factions in Iraq. And, mm -hmm. and Saddam Hussein kind of holds all of this stuff together. When he's gone, it's going to be chaos. Yeah. Well, and they, they, what they keep saying now is that, uh, well, if we leave Afghanistan, that, well, we can't leave Afghanistan in a place where, where um, terrorist attacks can be planned again. That's not where the terrorist attacks was planned from. Yeah. And, and just so that people oh, man. know. Oh, every time somebody says been, that, by the way, I just picture back in the day when all of this, back in 2001, 2002, when all this was mm -hmm. going on, anytime they talked about the, the, the terrorist training camps, they always mm -hmm. showed the guy on the monkey bars going across <laughs> like in these camps or whatever. So when you said that, I just had this picture of this, this like Arab guy crossing the monkey bars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, when does it come down to the monkey bars? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I mean, that's important <laughs> skill. You know, I guess so. <laughs> you never know when you might have to use that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, better, I, better be prepared. Yeah, um, that just popped in my head. No. I'm sorry. And, and just so that people don't know the real history, for for the people that don't know the real history of this, and uh, the terrorist attacks were not planned from Afghanistan. No, um, they were planned in the U.S. and in Germany. 
It was a bunch of students that were already in the U.S. and in Germany. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I'm going to steal somebody's line. I don't remember who's. But it's not like there's a magical portal between Afghanistan and, and Logan International Airport, right? <laughs> yeah. um, these people came from, they were already studying in the West. Yeah. Um, and the other thing to, to remember <coughs> is that none of them were Afghani. Yeah, that's like, true. The majority of the, of the hijackers were uh, Saudi Arabian. Um, the majority of the rest were Egyptian. These are two of our allies. We put Mubarak in power. We help support the Saud regime. Yeah. Um, and the reason that they wanted to to strike against America is because we were supporting their authoritarian, oppressive governments. Yeah. Um, and even Osama bin Laden, he's not Afghani. He's Saudi. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, once again, he was in Afghanistan. He was fighting the, the war against the Russians in Afghanistan. We were supporting him then. Yeah. Um, Zawahiri, who, who was, uh, as I understand it, the planner, he's Egyptian. Yeah. Right. Once again, these people were not Afghani. Yeah. Um, there's no reason for us to be at war with the people of Afghanistan. Yeah. None whatsoever. <laughs> right. yeah. And there never was. Yeah. There never was a reason for it. Yeah. So, um, but you know, mom did say that she, she had hoped that there would be some kind of UN force or something there. Um, because she was concerned that, um, uh, of the, if we left, um, the Chinese or the Russians or the Iranians moving in and, and taking over Afghanistan. And I said, let them, well, that's, <laughs> that's also what I finished with. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I said, I wasn't at all worried about that. And she said, why not? I said, because Afghanistan has a reputation of being the graveyard of empires. Exactly. Um, let- the Alexander couldn't get through there. The Roman empire couldn't get through there. The Soviet union couldn't get through there. The United States hadn't been able to get through there. If yeah. those, if any of those groups, like the Afghani, Afghani people, they don't think of themselves as, Af- as Afghani. They think of themselves as their various tribes. Yeah. Like I, have, I doubt many people outside of Kabul think of themselves of, as Afghani. Yeah. Um, it, it is still a tribal culture, and they are incredibly resistant to any kind of outside influence. And I, I'm just not concerned. They're not going to let an, another foreign power come in and take over. Yeah. And if the Chinese or the Russians or the Iranians want to waste their resources there for the next 20 years, let them. Let them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, now speaking of those influences, uh, while Biden keeps saying that he... Well, okay. So in a speech just recently... Um, Biden said, uh, the U S is not looking to kick off a cycle of escalation and conflict with Russia. Uh, we want a stable and predictable relationship. Now he said this in a speech where he was announcing the ejection of 10 di- diplomats from Russia oh. and the, um, uh, and sanctions on 32 Russian entities, um, in response to the solar winds, cyber attack, election interference, Okay. And the bounties, the, you know, the bounty fiasco that is oh, a lie, yeah. um, among other things. Yeah. So while we're trying to improve our relations with Russia, what we're going to do is we're going to sanction a bunch of their people and we're going to kick out 10 of their diplomats. I thought the kicking out thing was interesting, too, because I was when they were talking about it, um, I guess it was last night on the news or whatever. Apparently, they've got like a month to leave or something. Yeah. I thought I just thought that was interesting. Like, you know, we're kicking you out, so thirty days. It's like you got to give an eviction notice. Yeah, like, exactly. This I mean, me there's like, laws here, man. I, I, yeah, like, I, like we're kicking these guys out. They need to go. <laughs> um, I, and uh, you know, also another part of it is that um, that we, the American narrative, is that uh, Russia is making um, provocative, aggressive moves toward NATO. In Western Russia, yeah. uh, in Ukra- actually, what they say is in is Ukraine. Ukraine yeah. In Ukraine, yeah. now what Russia is actually doing is they're moving troops to their their western border yeah. in response to the uh, relocation of something like forty thousand uh, U.S. and NATO troops oh, sure. um, to their border. Yeah. <laughs> right. So they're responding to uh, what seems to be aggressive action, like. 
you know, the side that is constantly threatening you and saber rattling has moved a bunch of troops to your border. What yeah. do you do? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So what we're complaining about though, is Russia moving a bunch of troops within their own country. Yeah. Yeah. Still, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. their border. <laughs> and the claim that, um, you know, that they're about to attack Ukraine or that they've been attacking Ukraine or whatever, um, going back to the beginning of that conflict. Now, the reason that Russia got involved at all is because the uh, eastern Ukrainians, the people in the Donbass region that, that have some allegiance to Russia, who are ethnically Russian, um, were being attacked by the Ukrainians that we, that the U.S. had supported in the 2014 coup. Uh, coup. Um, and so the U.S. supported a, a government of Ukraine was now moving in death squads in the Donbass region and killing off ethnic Russians. <laughs> and that's why Russia got involved in the first place. And yeah. they're not directly involved. They're just providing support. Yeah. Which is the same thing that we're doing Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, like, where are we not providing support? <laughs> so, and I think that it's far more reasonable for Russia to, to provide, uh, you know, guns and money um, to ethnic Russians uh, just at, off of their western border in the Donbass region of Ukraine. It's far more reasonable for them to be doing that than for the U.S. to be providing money and weapons to the rest of the Ukrainians, right? you know? Um, so this whole thing is just... I don't know. It's just it, absurd. It is. Um, but it's certainly not Russia that's being aggressive here. We've moved NATO right up to their border yeah. um, after agreeing that we wouldn't, that, that NATO wouldn't move one step closer to their border. And now uh, there are former Russian republics that are part of NATO. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the U.S. and NATO are moving troops around in those republics that are right on the Russian border. Yeah. Makes it's got to make you at least a little antsy if you're Russian. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think that it's fair to characterize the aggressions as being or the Russians as being the aggressive party here. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, okay. Uh, I guess that's all I have about that. Um, I did want to make um one additional comment because we only we only talked very briefly about the judicial uh thing, the Supreme Court review oh, in the yeah. last episode. Um, and the truth is I've said most of what I wanted to say about it, but there wasn't one important point that I left out that I'd like to make here. Um, which is that I, I have been looking through the constitution Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I cannot find, uh, where, um, the, any two branches of government can redefine, um, the scope, uh, purpose and structure of the third. Yeah, I, I would. I, I, yeah, I I don't imagine that's in there anywhere. I mean, I'm, I haven't checked. Yeah. So you did. You you've done your homework on. Yeah, this. I'm 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 pretty confident. I like yeah. it's you know it's kind of some older language and it's it's a little yeah. legalistic in, at points, but um yeah. I'm I'm confident that if that had been in there, I would have caught it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, well, they're seriously making moves now, don't they? Have le aren't they getting ready to start moving legislation forward? Yeah, that's what I heard to ex uh, expand the court by four people. Yeah. That's coming out of um, the the legislative branches, though. Yeah. Um, so you got the executive branch that's reviewing the possibility, and and the legislative branch branch that's just making changes. And yeah. they can't. Well, okay. So the number of justices is not defined in the in the Constitution. Yeah. Um, but. And, and it has changed. I mean, it's it's ranged somewhere between six and ten judges over the well, history of the United States. Well, traditionally, how does it change? <clears throat> well, I don't know that. Okay. Yeah, I don't have yeah. I don't have that answer. Uh, yeah. Um, but now uh, I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I'm uh, yeah I'm mean, I'm curious too. I just didn't have time. You just hadn't seen it. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it it seems like a problem to me. Um, for them to re redefine for the, either the executive branch or the legislative branch to redefine the court. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that the, one of the questions that they had was, um, about terms, yeah. like how long judges could, could be on the, on the bench. Yeah. Um, and the popular idea is that the, uh, the judges serve life terms. Yeah. That's not what it says in the Constitution. What does it say? It says that they serve while in good behavior. So essentially, 
um, you can impeach a judge. Yeah. Well, there you go. So if you have adequate grounds for impeachment, you can remove judges. Well, that's a scary road to go down because the next thing you know, any kind of, um, I don't know, wrong opinions could be considered yeah. bad behavior. Well, they had to get six, 60% of the Senate to agree, though. Yeah, but once again, that's just, mm-hmm. you get all one side of the, one. I mean, all it takes is for one side to have a majority and think that something somebody said is all of a sudden No, they have to have 60%. Now. They have to have 60 votes. Yeah, 60 votes. But yeah, I mean, essentially. That's not just a simple mi- majority, though. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, control, though. Yeah. I mean, all it, ta- all it would take is for one side to have control over the Senate mm-hmm. to, to all of a sudden decide that something somebody said on the court is now, like, hate speech. Yeah. And well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, that, I think that that's okay. Um, well, at least because, it would be working within the framework. Exactly. And if, uh, if the... <coughs> They would have to put their vote down. As done this. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it could have repercussions on their reelection. Yeah. And most certainly would, which yeah. is probably the reason why that's not a very likely scenario. Right. But I am saying, like, I mean, the possibilities out there. I mean, it, crazier things have happened. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So. Um, and, uh, as long as we're talking about, uh, courts, uh, there, the Chauvin case has been going on. Um, yeah. So the guy who killed George Floyd, I guess they finished up, um, the defense finished up, finished up yesterday. I think they're having closing arguments Monday, right? Maybe I haven't actually really been following it. I've been following it a little bit. Um, I, I don't know. So you have any predictions? Um, Yeah. Uh, I have a prediction. I guess this is the... This is the prediction podcast. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Let's, uh, write that down. Sure. Um, I predict that there will be riots no matter how it ends. Yeah, that's probably a pretty safe bet right there. Yeah, I predict there will be riots well, either way. Um, there kind of I, already has been riots. Well, that's true too. But it was another... Uh, well, I have some comments about that too. Um, that... Yeah, uh, you want to get into that one? Yeah, I, I will. Well, I'm happy to. We well, got, you know, yeah. we got ten more minutes or something like yeah. that. I don't have ten minutes to talk about the Chauvin case. Yeah, um, I can tell you that I think that they won't be able to convict for murder. Um, I that think I think be... that the manslaughter case is even hard. Yeah. Um, I, I I think that that he's going to end up uh, being found not guilty. Um, and uh, you know, I don't know, but just the way this has been constructed by the prosecution from what I've seen so far, I just don't see how they can um, uh, avoid reasonable doubt on the jury uh, on any of the charges. In in a normal case, I'd absolutely agree with you. I mean, I have watched some of it and seen some of the, the highlights and whatnot. Um, but in, in the normal case, I'd agree that, that the evidence just isn't there and doubt definitely is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that this case has been so high profile and everybody knows that if, if this guy gets off, that there's going to be people in the streets yeah. that has to have an impact on the jury. Well, I think that there's, yeah, I think also that there's an implicit threat against the jurors if they there is. find not I, guilty. And, um, and I'm pretty sure it was the New York times actually published personal information about jurors. Well, I mean, we'll uh, they didn't publish names, but they gave you enough information that if you're interested, you can you probably track them. down who they are. Yeah. And I cannot, cannot believe that they did that. Well, I mean, it's, it's like I say, I would not want to be on that jury. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's a toss up. It could go either way. I actually kind of lean on the side that they're going to convict him though, because mm-hmm. I think that there's, I think there's enough evidence. I, I do believe that there's still doubt there, but I think the overwhelming, um, just like you say, implicit threat is is enough to throw it over the top. But I think you're right. I think there'll be people in the streets no matter what. Well, and the unfortunate thing is that the the a riotous response um, makes the argument to intensify policing. Yeah, um, and which is rather than reform the law yeah. around it. Yeah. Um, now. That said, though, uh, New York City and New Mexico have, in the last month or so, um, both passed legislation to end qualified immunity. Yeah. Uh, And qualified immunity is the doctrine established by the Supreme Court in 1982 uh, that that protects 
government workers from prosecution for violating people's constitutional or civil rights in the course of their duties. And the, the important phrase is, uh, unless those rights are clearly established. Now, what that has been interpreted to mean, though, is that you need to have a case that has already been, I mean, they've essentially rested the whole thing on um, judicial precedent. Yeah. And so you have to have a case where, uh, I mean, well, the way it's been interpreted, essentially, you have to have a case that is exactly the same yeah. that has already been found um, in favor of the, uh, of the victim um, yeah. against the, the state agent. Yeah. And um, so what happens is, in reality, is that there are enough differences in every single case that it hasn't been quote unquote clearly established. And because of that, the way the doctrine was set up now, they won't try that case. Yeah. So yeah. you can't establish anything new and nothing that has, nothing has been already established. So here we so sit. Yeah. It, it essentially grants complete immunity to state officers in, um, in, in their duties yeah. um, for any civil or constitutional rights violations. Yeah. So they can essentially act with impunity. So, but this has been repealed in some areas. This has been repealed in New York city and in New Mexico. And I think that there's legislation in Illinois yeah. uh, to do the same thing. No, well, that's not nothing. Yeah. Well, if you'll remember, this was our, our number one point of things that needed to be changed to reform policing right now. Yeah. Um, when the George Floyd thing when first happened. When this all happened. started, yeah. 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 No, I remember that. So. Um, I don't remember what episode that was. I, I should yeah. have gone back and looked and jotted it down to make a reference, but oh well. Yeah. It was um, in that time. Go back and find it. <laughs> yeah, it was in that time period. <laughs> yeah. That was a good episode because we talked about a lot of stuff on that episode. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, I think that that's, that's at least hopeful that they're... That yeah that there are some states that are recognizing the dangers of that. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, and of course the, the complaint from um, statists and police officers and so forth is that uh, they'll have trouble recruiting and, you know, all these kind of things because, you know, now they can be held liable for just doing their job. Um, but the truth is that making them um, accountable for things that they've done wrong uh, does a lot more good than it does harm. Yeah. And, um, and hopefully like if they're held accountable, they'll behave better to begin with. And that maybe it'll be easier to recruit the right kind of people instead of the wrong kind of people that are just there to, to lord their authority over everybody. Yeah. Um, and hopefully it'll change the culture and policing where, um, where maybe that blue wall will come down a little bit. Well, I'll tell you, that is, there was some serious cracks in that blue wall during the Chauvin case. That's true. Um, like, they, there was a lot of high-ranking officers making testimony that I'm telling you years ago they would have never made. Mm -hmm. they, they just wouldn't have. Um, yeah, that this is not how we train people. and yeah, yeah, all of that stuff. Like, you wouldn't have heard that a few years, even a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but they realized that, like, something's got to give here. Like, yeah. I mean, we are at kind of a breaking point here, mm -hmm. whether you agree, whether regardless of how you feel about it, like we are at a point here. Yeah. Well, uh, the unfortunate thing uh, again with it, um, the way the, uh, prosecution from what I've seen has chosen to pursue this case. And with the near certainty that it's going to end in riots either way. Um, I think that the, um, that it's not going to have the result that we would like to see. I, I would like to see more of a focus on um, how, uh, what the reality of most policing in this country is and trying to change the, the culture of police abuse. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it should focus more on um, the way that, uh, that government authorities generally use and abuse their power and the, that there is no real accountability. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't think that's the way that it's being done. It's, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we will see. So my prediction is riots though on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a pretty safe bet right there. Mm -hmm. That's, that's where my money's at. 
Um, anything? Did you, did you have anything you wanted to say about Taser Lady? Or? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's do Taser Lady before we end out really here. I really want to do this. Um, this. This might get us censored. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> so one of the big problems that I see here, um, and it's not exclusively uh, because she's a woman, but it is partially because she's a woman. And I would think that you have the same problem with small men um, as well. Um, and probably have less of uh, this problem with like um, big, strong women. Yeah. Uh, but I think that what I saw in the, um, in the footage there was that she, she couldn't control this guy physically. Yeah. Um, and she lost control of him and he was getting back in his car and to get away from her and she couldn't do anything about it because she just didn't have the physicality to do so. Yeah. Uh, and she reached for a weapon. Now, mistaking your taser for a gun. And all that, I mean, I just, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that's a real big training issue anyway, but I think that the real problem and, and it's, this is a problem that leads to, um, shootings and tasings and, uh, more frequently than it's probably talked about is that, um, you end up with somebody that just doesn't have the physicality to control the suspect. Yeah. And so they aren't confident with it either. And they are much more, quicker to reach for a taser or a gun because they just can't do it any other way. Yeah. Uh, it's a scary thing. I mean, that a cop could make that kind of mistake. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. I mean, I think you are right. I think that that has a lot to do with it, that just, I've got to get control of the situation. And this is the only way I know how. Yeah. And maybe this is just a terrible accident, mm -hmm. but even if it is. Well, I mean, she sounded like she... Oh, I watched the video. Yeah. She sounded like... That. I mean, it does sound like... I mean, I wouldn't yeah. argue... I mean, I do think that it was just a terrible accident. Yeah, I think what she did horrified her. Yeah, yeah. No, I absolutely um, agree. Um, I, I think that it might help if you didn't make the um, the grip of a taser so similar to a gun that you couldn't immediately tell the I difference when you grabbed it. Looking at a taser... <laughs> I mean, I've never handled a taser. I've handled guns for a while, but I've never handled a taser like that. So I don't mm -hmm. actually know, but I just can't imagine that, that they would be that similar. But maybe? I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. No experience with that. Um, but it is... It's It's... It's a scary thing to think that that could even like happen. Yeah. You know, because uh, that could happen to, I mean, I won't say to anybody. It could happen mm -hmm. to anybody in a traffic stop, though. I mean, if, if things escalate to a certain degree, you know, whether you escalate it there or not, like, because that's something that people, a lot of people on the right say, get on my nerves with a lot is, mm -hmm. well, if you just obey, then, then these things won't happen. Mm -hmm. And, that's not necessarily even true. Yeah. Like, There's a fear factor poli for police as well. And the more afraid they are, the more likely something like this well, is going to happen. And, and some now, people... So there is some truth to follow, like follow directions. But, well, I agree with but that. But the, the other side of that, though, is that at any time, you can stop following directions, and the police know that too. Well, yeah. And the thing is... And if some, they don't think they can con control you when you make that decision to stop following directions, yeah. then they're more likely to react in a, in this kind of... They Violent are, way. but some people just get antsy and act weird around police. That's true. Too. I know this because I'm one of them. Yes, you are. <laughs> like I, I, I will make bad decisions when police start commanding me and making me do stuff. Like mm -hmm. I just, I get it. I get flustered. I get nervous. Like mm -hmm. it's just one of them things. And I get irritated. All of these are like bad mixes. Yes. Like, so it, there's, there has to, to think that somebody could just grab the wrong weapon and shoot you with it is a scary thought. Mm hmm. Even for someone like me. <laughs> so. You mean a white person? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, I meant that just acts funky around police officers, yeah. but that too. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You got anything else that you want to no. say about any of this? I think, I think we've about Is there covered anything it. you want to circle back to? Ah, not circling back today. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how many of these predictions come true in the next, in the, in the coming weeks and months, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Should be an interesting. This will be, it'll be an interesting few weeks. Um, yeah. There's some, I hope I'm wrong about. Yeah. And well, actually I, I might think I'm wrong about all. I, I might hope that I'm wrong about all of them. Yeah. But we'll see. Cause I, I think that I would prefer Biden stay in office than uh, Kamala. Kamala. I would agree um, with that. I definitely don't want us soldiers to die in 
Afghanistan yeah. um, after we don't leave. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't want riots. Yeah. So, and I uh, want us to leave at some point in Afghanistan. Yeah, that too. No, I forgot that was a prediction too. <laughs> that was a prediction too. Yeah, I would like us to leave. Yeah. <laughs> that would that by even if it is just by the end of the year, I'll take it. Like yeah. I, and and I'll say this right now, like I mean, so I'm pretty critical of Biden at this moment for mm-hmm. not stand not taking the official date and leaving when we're supposed to. Yeah. I'll give him credit if he leaves after 9/11. Like yeah. I say, I'm kind of kicking and screaming the whole way, but if he leaves, he leaves. I'll give him props where it's due. Well, and it feels like he, it, it seems like he actually, now I didn't think that this was going to have the impact that it seems to have, but it's, it, it does appear that he has actually withdrawn any kind of meaningful support to the Saudis in the war in Yemen Yeah, as well. And I'll give him credit for that, too. That's the worst thing that we're involved in. Now, we are still part of the, um, like, U.S. is still part of the blockade that's starving. Starving They're predicting um, close to half a million children in the next year. Uh, But if, I mean, but he has made progress, like, real legit. I was was dubious about the original agreement where he has, like, stopped providing offensive support. Like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, we'll see how this goes. Yeah. Does that yeah. mean that we're not going to like actively give them bombs or something? You know, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, it seems like there has been a real meaningful withdrawal of U.S. help to the Saudis in Yemen. And um, if he can actually put a reel into it, if he can like put his foot down at some point and say, yeah, we're, we're going to, yeah, we're going to make the, the rule here. We're withdrawing ourselves from the blockade and uh, we're telling you, Saudi, that if you want to continue with good relations with us, you need to just stop this. Yeah. And if he does that, I'll give him a lot of credit for that too. Well, there you go. So, so there's you, your goals, so, uh, Joe Biden, so, if you're listening so to this. So if you're listening to us, you got your marching orders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Let's just hope you remember them. <laughs> yeah. so write them down fast. <laughs> all right. Fast. Uh, all right. Uh, so with that, um, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, follow us on uh, Facebook. Subscribe. iTunes. You can find us on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. For um, now. For, yeah. Oh, yeah. For now. We might have to make some new YouTube arrangements. Yeah. I, I, God, I was so opposed to that in the first place because yeah. of exactly this. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to spend all this time moving all this stuff over to YouTube and it's our channel is going to be up for just down. like <laughs> no time at all before they're like, no, you're not the kind of person that we want <laughs> talking here. We don't like your kind around here. Exactly. <laughs> um, so for now, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think we're pretty safe on iTunes and Podbean. So far, yeah. 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 Um, it would be nice to have our own infrastructure, but we don't make that kind of money. Yeah. Um, so iTunes, Podbean. It does, does help that we're paying Podbean. So like that, yeah. that has an impact. Like, yeah, that's the, true. The market works. <laughs> yeah, to a degree. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when we start that Patreon, we'll see how long that lasts. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they get a commission on that, so there's no they got uh, financial they got incentives incentive. to keep supporting us too. But they have certainly withdrawn support from plenty of people. So, wow. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah. Follow us. Uh, subscribe, like, share, comment. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> you know, if you do a carpool, put us on while all the kids are there. Yeah. Go ahead and start the start <laughs> start, start the training young. early. <laughs> I mean, they're getting the one side of the propaganda in public school. You may as well give well, them the other side too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> give them the opportunity to make up their own mind. Absolutely. Um, and uh, we'll be back in a in a week, uh, hopefully, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.